Welcome everyone to another copy tea scene. I'm your host and copy master Aaron Taylor and today we are tasting and revisiting the blonde espresso. With the blonde espresso it is going to be a mixture of the Guatemala, Colombia and Kenya and this is a smoother richer espresso flavor compared to the bold traditional roasty notes that we get from a traditional Italian espresso. So for those of you who are joining me for the first time, welcome. It is an honor to have you on this channel. And for those of you returning, welcome back. If you haven't had a chance to hit that like and subscribe button, please do hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps me create this channel, make it much more better, and make more content for everyone. So thank you so much for all the support that you have all provided. And let's get this coffee tasting underway. So... For those of you who are new to the channel, we like to brew the coffee three different ways. The reason why we like to brew the coffee three different ways is so that we can explore the different flavor notes that we get from the different brew methods. So with the different brew methods, we're going to get different amounts of sediment and different amounts of oil, and that's going to impact the flavor of the coffee that we're drinking. On the pour over coffee, it is going to have one of the uh, finer grinds, but it's going to also be one of the faster brews. Uh, and then we also have a paper filter, and that's going to absorb some of the oils and most of the sediments. So it's going to impact the flavor of our coffee. We're going to get a lot more of those brighter notes than what you would on a French press or Chemex. On the Chemex, the Chemex is a triple paper filter. So we're absorbing more of those oils on top of the amount of sediments that we're already absorbing with the regular paper filter. And so what that does is it kind of balances out the cup of coffee because on the pour over we're getting a citrus heavy, those bright notes really come forward or the roasty notes. With the Chemex, it allows some more of those sediment flavors to come forward, giving us more of a uh, balanced cup of coffee. So with the Starbucks Blonde Espresso, this is a roast that was made for everyone who doesn't necessarily like those intense, bold, roasty notes that you get from a traditional espresso. But with this blend, if you're from Northern Italy and you revere your espresso and you're heavy on your culture, you wouldn't even consider the Blonde Espresso espresso because what espresso is is specific to the flavor notes that traditional espresso that we've come to know. So it, to have a true traditional northern Italian espresso, we want those bold, intense, roasty notes, like those woodsy, roasty flavor. And so with this, we're not getting those roasty notes. We are still getting a bold flavor, but we're mainly highlighting the milk chocolate notes with a subtle citrus flavor. It's gonna be very, very smooth. Mainly, we're gonna get those milk chocolate bitters, and that's where that boldness comes from. This is one of my favorite espressos, um, just because I do like the smoother milk chocolate notes. I'm not a big fan of those bold, roasty notes, uh, especially in an espresso when you're highlighting those roasty notes and they really come forward. It has a very, very bitter, intense flavor to it. And I like to taste a little bit more of those milk chocolate notes. So with this one, I really like the blonde espresso because we're highlighting still a bold flavor, but we're exploring a different type of bold flavor. And in, in this case, it is going to be um, chocolate bitters. That's our bold flavor in this cup. So 
So a lot of people like to ask, what is the best brew or the best way to brew your coffee? And I believe that there is no best way to brew your coffee. It depends on the flavor that you're looking for. So if you're looking for bold flavors, um, lots of sediment, lots of oils, you definitely want to go for a French press. But if like the sediments mess with your stomach too much or you're just not looking for a bolder cup of coffee, you can go for a pour over. But if the pour over highlights too much of those bright notes, like the bright citrus notes or those roasty notes or the floral notes, I would definitely choose the Chemex because with the Chemex, it's giving us a more balanced cup of coffee. It's allowing some of those citrus notes to kind of take a back seat or a side seat and allow some of those bitters to come forward, giving us a cleaner, more balanced cup of coffee. And with the Chemex versus the French press, I would say the flavors are typically almost always the same, except for the flavor levels and the amount of sediment that you're getting in your cup of coffee. So with the French press, you are getting a lot of sediments and that can uh, mess with your stomach if you have a sensitive uh, gut. Uh, but with the Chemex, we're getting those same flavors, but not as much sediment. So those flavor levels are gonna be much more uh, tame and uh, much easier on your gut biome as well. All right, so now we are going to go ahead and taste our coffee. Uh, with the coffee tastings, we like to smell our coffee, then sip it, and then we break down the flavors that we're getting. So when I smell the pour over, we're definitely getting a little bit of those smooth citrus notes, but we're mainly getting those chocolate notes. And that's what's nice about this blonde espresso is even though we have some Kenya coffee in here that gives us those bright citrusy notes, it's a very smooth, subtle citrus flavor. It's not too intense, not too bright. That is really good. So with the pour over, we're getting those bright, citrusy, almost floral flavors. Um, and then as it starts to wash away, we are definitely getting a little bit of a hint of milk chocolate. But those citrusy floral flavors are definitely driving the cup of coffee in the pour over. As the palate starts to wash away, I'm left with like a subtle floral floraliness. Very, very subtle, but it does leave a somewhat of a dry palate on my tongue. Really, really good. We're getting some really nice, smooth milk chocolate notes at the very beginning. And as it washes away, we're getting that sweet, bright, citrusy floral flavor. All right. So now we're going to try the Chemex. With the Chemex, it is a triple paper filter. So we're absorbing some more of those oils and we're retaining those sediments as well. So it's going to be a cleaner cup of coffee, much more smoother in flavor, but it's going to be a more balanced cup as well. So immediately right off the bat, we're getting a lot more of a subtle bitter chocolate flavor and just a, uh, just a tinge of brightness. That is really good. So what we're getting right now is mainly those bitter chocolates and then we're getting some subtle floral citrus as well alongside the chocolates. It's not like we're mainly getting chocolate at the very beginning and then as it washes away we get those floral citrus notes. We're getting them hand in hand. So it's a really, really good balanced cup of coffee. Very smooth. We're not left with like a lingering tingeness of those floral notes. Uh, it all kind of washes away together. Really good. I love the milk chocolate subtle notes that we get from the blonde espresso. That's what makes it one of my favorites because when I do drink coffee, I do look for the Latin American signature milk chocolate notes that we get. All right, so now we are going to try the French press. With the French press, we are getting more sediments and a lot more oils. And so we're going to get a heavier cup of coffee and then it's going to have much more flavor. So it's going to be uh, 
flavor-wise, similar to the Chemex, but it's as if you turn the volume on the flavor up. So we're getting the similar flavor notes, but much more intense. Oh yeah, so with the French press, we're getting a lot more of those milk chocolate notes at the very beginning. They're much bolder, a little bit more bitter, and then also at the same time with that bright florally sweetness that we get, uh, because those bitters are a little bit stronger on the French press, it makes those floral notes taste that much sweeter. So the bitterness that impacts the cup of coffee is going to affect the sweetness of the bright floral flavors that we get, especially as the palate starts to clear. The contrast from the bitters that from the initial sip compared to the bitters of our palate clearing in our tongue just tastes sweet. It's not necessarily sweet, but in contrast to the intense bitters that we get from the initial sip, it's going to have the illusion of tasting sweet because we're contrasting no sweetness right next to bitters. Very, very good. I like this cup of coffee a lot on the French press. It's very smooth for a French press, and we get some delicious milk, ch delicious, delicious milk chocolate notes. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So now we're going to learn a little bit about the Blonde Espresso and where it comes from. So the Blonde Espresso is a mixture of Colombia, Guatemala, and Kenya. And today we're going to explore a little bit more about Guatemala. So with coffee, we have very rich stories from each region of the world. And we have lots of stories to tell. So this gives us an opportunity to taste our coffee and learn stories at the same time. So we are revisiting the Blonde Espresso. This is the second time we've tasted this coffee on this channel. But we're exploring a new story today. So with today's story, we're focusing on Guatemala. And we're going to focus on when and why Guatemala started growing coffee. So it's a very interesting story on how it all began. It... Obviously, coffee made its way to that part of the world through uh, Spanish colonialism. Um, and then a lot of things happened with the, the, the local uh, Mayan lands and distribution of, uh, of land and, and forced labor. So there was not a lot of good things going on in this part of the world. So coffee made its way um, to that part of Latin America in like the late 1700s. But... It wasn't until the early 1800s is when coffee really started to make a foothold in Guatemala. And that is because of the, um, the English actually um, invented a chemical dye in the 1800s. And so when the chemical dyes were invented, the exports uh, and demand for indigo and cochineal from Guatemala declined. They stopped exporting these colors to uh, England and Britain because they were able to make chemical dyes and reduce the cost of making these colors. Um, and so a lot of farmers in Guatemala were losing out on crops because they weren't seeing the demand for these specific colors anymore. So coffee ended up replacing a lot of these crops. And so it's really cool to see how coffee really helped people around the world um, change the way they do things and implement them into their current crops to continue to supply themselves with a sustainable livelihood. And so coffee ended up replacing the, the dye industry in Guatemala. And then it was in 1859... Uh, when one million coffee plants were planted in Guatemala. So in the early 1800s is when coffee made its foothold into Guatemala. And then 59, 59 years later, we have a huge plantation of coffee being had uh, with one million plants. And then one after one year, so in 1860... Uh, the production of coffee in Guatemala had tripled from the one million plants that they had already had. So 
the coffee growth in Guatemala in this part of the world is is growing substantially and it's helping farmers in this part of the world gain a sustainable livelihood and fair economic wage and at the same time um, helping people in this part of the world um, get introduced to fair trade making sure that the farmers being paid uh, what they're supposed to be paid and then shortly after that we have Justo Justo Rufino, who uh, actually ended up making coffee a backbone and staple of Guatemala's econ economy. And so that's how important coffee is to this community and to Guatemala, is because we have a decline in other crops such as banana, sugar, and dyes, which I did not know until I explored this story that Guatemala supplied indigo and cochineal to the British and the Scottish for their dye purposes to make clothing. And so in the 1800s, chemical dyes were invented and farmers paid the price. But they had coffee as a fallback plan and it was so effective that it became a backbone of Guatemala's economy and they supply some of the world's most and best coffee. So that is the story of today's Guatemalan coffee and the Blonde Espresso by Starbucks, which is a blend of Guatemala, Colombia, and Kenya. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining today's coffee tasting and learning a little bit about the history of Guatemala and its farmers. I hope you guys enjoyed. Tune in this Tuesday as we explore another local business and we explore the coffee that they have to offer. Thanks again for joining everyone. Have a great day and I hope your coffee was just as delicious as mine.